It's unclear when the Olympics will actually happen. They're currently scheduled for later this year, but they've gotten delayed enough times that there's no telling whether or not they'll actually stick to the date this time around. But whether or not the Olympics do end up happening when scheduled, Sega has decided to no longer wait. Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, a new game by the publisher that was originally meant as a tie-in to the sporting event, originally scheduled for last year, is now available. Before we go ahead, a quick request. We upload new videos every single day and your subscription matters a lot. So please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's begin. Sega presumably rightly feels that there is no point in waiting on the video game side of things, even if the actual athletic contest ends up never happening. It's a curious game to review actually. Tokyo 2020 originally launched in Japan all the way back in June 2019, so two years ago. So we're not even only reviewing a game that's meant to be a tie-in for an already delayed event that may never happen, we're also effectively looking at something that's been out for two years already. The world moved on a lot in these two years, especially in the video games industry, where an entire new generation of consoles launched in the interim, and player expectations for a new game are not necessarily what they were back when Tokyo 2020 first came out. The good thing is Tokyo 2020 is a straightforward enough value proposition that a lot of these considerations simply don't come into play. It's pitching itself as a cheap game to families and fans of the Olympics, mostly, and promising an experience to accompany the sporting event. It's not really positioning itself as a premium game or as trying to recreate to any degree the authenticity or real world look of the Olympics. So not like the EA Sports games, for example. It's a budget game that includes a lot of sporting events for you to play through that just happens to bear the Olympics branding. What this means is that if you're expecting the kind of high-end pizzazz and production qualities that, say, FIFA 21 has, you're out of luck here. Unlike FIFA, it's hard for anyone to confuse Tokyo 2020 for the real thing at a glance. It very distinctly looks gamey and doesn't try to include real-world branding or presentation elements. Also, unlike FIFA or NBA or MLB or mostly every other sports game on the market, Tokyo 2020 has to include multiple games within it. We're talking judo and boxing and sports climbing, athletics, 100 meter sprints, tennis, table tennis, football, rugby, basketball, and actually a fair few more games. This means by definition that it cannot have any individual component playing as well as a more full-fledged, thoroughly developed game based on what that component might be. In simpler words, while basketball in Tokyo 2020 is fun, you can't come into it expecting it to match the depth of an NBA game that only focuses on basketball and can spend a lot of time and resources fleshing out the basketball mechanics. Tokyo 2020 has to spread its attention among several games. If you are a diehard fan of that sport, this can almost feel disappointing, but it actually works for Tokyo 2020. In as much as we are looking at this as a more casual offering, something for families to play together or to pull out during parties, or even just something you got for yourself just to dabble with, the lack of depth in each individual sport works well. It means the games are easier to explain, easier to understand, and easier to get into. You don't have to spend 30 minutes explaining to the next person to get the controller that the goalkeeper AI responds to how you faint or the degree to which you press the trigger, just a basic understanding of the sports rules as well as the game's simplified control scheme is enough to get the job done. To the game's credit, it seems to be explicitly designed around these kinds of use cases as well. Extremely simple, but thoroughly effective prompts tutorializing the basic controls for a game show up the first time you start it up, and you can pull them up again whenever you want in between rounds of that game. Controls, as mentioned, are extremely straightforward and intuitive, and require minimal inputs. Even the look of the game with an uncluttered UI free of the real world presentation trappings that so many other sports games go for seems to be inviting for newer and less experienced players. Of course, if you expected a deeper game that leans into its official tie-in trappings more and strove to deliver an authentic recreation of the event like many other sports games on the market do, you would be disappointed. And to be fair, in and of itself, that's not even an unreasonable expectation. This is actually the first normal Olympics game we have gotten in over a decade. 
Typically, Sega puts out one each time there are Summer or Winter Olympics, but those are branded Mario and Sonic at the Olympics and are pitched as family-friendly Olympic game offerings. With a Mario and Sonic edition for the 2020 games already existing, you wouldn't be wrong for expecting that the more straightforwardly branded Tokyo 2020 would instead go for the more authentic, deeper companion piece to the event route that so many other sports games do. This is, however, very distinctly not that. It's fine for what it is, but it is very clearly mid-budget. You can see that with how it looks, you can figure that out with the limited number of canned commentary phrases, you can see that in the art style, the animation, the lack of real-world branding. It's everywhere, actually. I don't think that it's a bad thing at all, and the game with its budget pricing is upfront about this too. I think Tokyo 2020 is actually the most fun Olympic game we've gotten in over a decade, and I think it works far better as a more casual take than opting to be an authentic sim companion to the Olympics themselves. And I think that the game's easy controls, support for local and online multiplayer, uncluttered HUD and UI, and straightforward interpretations of most games included work in its favor. While I understand the disappointment those looking for a more authentic or grounded take on the Olympics may feel, I think Tokyo 2020 works really well for what it is. It is a fun and involved party and multiplayer game that knows that sometimes less really can be more. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request before we conclude. We upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we are doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, do not forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.